This is Math 151, uh, Practice Assessment 1. This is problem number 4a. And we are supposed to find the derivative of this function using our limit definition. And remember our limit definition of a derivative. Um, basically, we have some shape. We want to find the steepness of it at some x. And what we do is we go an arbitrary distance away. We'll call it h. And then we get another point to get us a secant line. Right? If I'm x away, this is at x plus h. And then I, I slowly let that secant line slide down to become that tangent line. The slope of that tangent line is my derivative. So I'm looking for the, um, the slope at some x. I'm actually looking for an equation that will give me the slope at any x. But what I'm doing is I, I'm letting h, I'm letting that distance become 0. And then I'm going... Um, secant one point minus the point that I want, and that's over that distance between the points. Let that distance become zero. My secant becomes my tangent. I should have a good, I should know my derivative if it exists. So that's what we're going to try and find. We're going to try and find the limit as h approaches zero of this function if I plug in an x plus h minus this function if I just plug in an x. over the distance between those two points. Let that distance become zero, it should have my derivative. So notice if I try to do direct substitution here, I'm dividing by zero, so that does nothing for me. Um, I have radicals up here. So I'm gonna try and rationalize this numerator and hope that I can cancel out an h. So what I'm gonna do is multiply by some version of one that uses the uh, conjugate. So it's that one, and then instead of minus, it's plus the second one. And remember that you're doing that to both the numerator and the denominator. You're doing it to both. I see folks sometimes forget to do it down here as well. But um, you're multiplying by one. You're not, you're not changing the actual value of it. So let's see what we get once we do that. Um, notice in the denominator, I just have h times that. In the numerator, uh, this times this gets rid of the radical, so I have 5 minus that x plus h. This part you need to be really careful with your signs. A negative times a positive is a negative. So I'm going to be subtracting the whole thing that's left. That times that uh, gets rid of my radical, so 5 minus x. Great. All right, so I'm here. Um, so let me clean up this, this numerator a little bit. I'll just kind of do a little bit of scratch work about it. I'll distribute that in. So I get 5 minus x minus h. Distribute that in. Minus 5 plus x. And what's nice is uh, 5 minus 5 is 0. Negative x plus x is 0. So I'm left with just a negative h in the numerator, which is great because then now I can do some some canceling. So let me just rewrite what I have. Negative h over h times this mess. And uh, negative h divided by h is negative 1. So that's going to leave me my limit as h goes to 0 of negative 1 over this mess. 5 minus x plus h plus 5 minus x. And now that h canceled, so now I can do some direct substitution. As h goes to 0, that just goes to 0. So that right there becomes a 0. So I have uh, negative 1 over square root of 5 minus x plus square root of 5 minus x. Oh, I just have two of those. So I can rewrite this as negative 1 over 2 square root of 5 minus x, and there's my derivative as a function. So if I have this function, the derivative of it at any x is that. 